Hey everyone, my name is Paul Joseph Russell, but you can just call me Joe. I've embarked on a journey to write my first novel, in fact, a trilogy of novels called Rivendoa. I live with my husband Richard on six acres of land nestled in the wilds of Virginia. And every Monday, I post a video sharing the progress of my writing as well as projects on our little stretch of land. For today's video, I want to reflect on the events of September 11, 2001. So, I hope you'll join me on my adventures in living as a writer and an artist. Welcome back everybody to my author's channel here on YouTube. Um, today is not my normal uh, Monday video. Um, I wanted to uh, kind of take this opportunity today to make just a kind of a quick video and talk a little bit about uh, the terror attacks that occurred on September 11th, 2001. As most of you know, today is the 20th anniversary of 9-11. Uh, uh, the September 11th attacks on New York City, uh, Washington, uh, and Shanksville, Pennsylvania, where uh, Flight uh, 93 came down in a, in a field. Um, I just wanted to take a moment to note this uh, day uh, and talk a little bit about its effects on me as an individual, an artist, and as a writer and also sort of on, uh, on us as a nation. On a clear day, you can see forever. Uh, that, those are the lyrics, um, actually the title and the title of a film that came out in the 1960s. Um, and in a way it sort of is the perfect description of the morning of September 11th, 2001. I remember being at work that day and someone brought in a small uh, TV and we sort of watched in horror as the events of that day unfolded before us. Um, it was simply uh, unfathomable. You, you just couldn't believe what was happening. Um, I personally felt a deep connection to uh, Washington, D.C. because I grew up in Northern Virginia and I was l actually living in Richmond at the time, which was not f that far from D.C. And, you know, as a child, we used to go to the mall, the Smithsonian. We would go, you know, I remember going to the um, Washington Monument and the Capitol, uh, Lincoln's Memorial, um, the Jefferson Memorial. Uh, so I have very fond memories of uh, being in the city uh, and, and those places. So when the Pentagon was attacked, it was, uh, uh, it felt like it was personal to me. Um, in the fall of 2000, uh, Richard and I spent a week in New York City. Uh, and these are uh, a few pictures of, uh, you know, we sort of, we, we did some fun, uh, We'd been to New York a couple times before, but we did some fun uh, touristy things we hadn't done before. Uh, we went up and one of the things we did was to go up on the uh, Empire State Building and we took some photographs, which you can see here. Uh, there's some picture of Richard uh, with the uh, Chrysler Building behind. And then if you look at the picture of me, you can see the Twin Towers and uh, Lower Manhattan uh, behind me on the skyline. Uh, so, you know, when, when the attack happened, you know, and watching it on TV and thinking about having been in those places, uh, of course, I was never, I never, we never went to uh, uh, the World Trade Center, uh, but we were in that area downtown. And uh, so watching that also seemed very personal to me. Uh, you know, I felt like, as I, I'm sure 
many people felt, you know, all Americans felt on that day that this was an attack on us personally, you know, the, the horrible, terrible, terrible event. You know, uh, watching those uh, buildings fall was like watching the uh, end of the world. And to me, it seemed like, it seems to me that our country has never fully recovered from that day. You know, we honored the dead. Uh, we cleaned up the destruction at Ground Zero and at the Pentagon, uh, and we got back to work. The, it seemed like, you know, after a couple of weeks of grief, it, the, the goal was to show, you know, the terrorists um, and those who were, you know, Al Qaeda that we would not be uh, stopped by their attacks of terror. So we just got back to work. You know, we uh, attacked Afghanistan, <laughs> went, went to war. Uh, we killed Osama bin Laden eventually. Uh, but as a country, I don't think we have, we have even begun the recovery process from that event. I think everybody almost tried to put it behind them and move on. Uh, and even in a literal way, uh, when the buildings fell, it was, uh, it was like uh, it obliterated all the evidence of what had happened. It was just like it became this, uh, it just destroyed everything. All the, all the bodies that fell and the blood on the streets and the people that died, uh, it, was all, it was all just turned to dust and obliterated. And all that remained was the skeletal structure of the Twin Towers and uh, the broken facade of the Pentagon. And also, you know, what, what a big hole in the ground in, in Shanksville, Pennsylvania. And, and that was all that was left. Um, so I think in a way, um, uh, we really haven't come to terms with it. And I, and I think uh, the trauma of those events has really affected who we are uh, as a nation. You know, I believe the, the current state of anger and acrimony, uh, and uh, distrust we feel politically on, and divided in so many ways and fractured in so many ways uh, as a nation uh, and as a people can be traced directly to the events of that day. You know, I, I personally feel a, a hardened bitterness that I see in the people around me that was not there in Americans before that. You know, and it, it's sad, but it is a truth of our existence as Americans. Uh, you know, my father died uh, at the age of 75 in October of 1999, uh, just before I was about to turn 40. Uh, and like most men, you know, when your father passes, uh, you sort of reflect inward about your own life uh, and looking back at your father's life. Uh, and so that sort of uh, opened a sort of reflective stage uh, in my life. Then of course came 9-11, uh, which was such a shocking and terrible event uh, that left me feeling like the entire world was sliding out from under my feet. I'm sure any of you who were of that age or uh, in your adulthood at that time uh, probably have similar feelings. Um, it was without doubt uh, the most horrific act of terror ever inflicted on a country in the history of the world. There are really no words that can describe the horrific uh, human tragedy and terrible events of that day. There just, there's no way uh, to describe it. You know, the, uh, the death of my father and the events of 9-11 uh, and turning 40 kind of all at once within a short span of years uh, sort of set the tone uh, for me for the decade to come. Uh, and it, I think I sort of had to face a lot of things in life that maybe is the reason that I'm here. Um, and it has affected my has affected me as an artist and as a writer and as, of course, as a human being. 
Um, but I'll talk about more of that later, more about that later in another video. I sort of want to get to a little in depth on uh, some of the things that have shaped me as a writer uh, and, and how I'm putting some of those things into uh, my book, Rivendoa. But today I just want to focus on uh, taking a, you know, pausing for a moment and acknowledging and honoring those who uh, passed on that terrible day and also those who ran forward towards the fire uh, and the destruction to try and save them. You know, all those who selflessly gave comfort and aid in that time of crisis, you know, they, they deserve to be honored. For, for, for their heroic acts that day. I would like to end this video uh, with a collection of images uh, that I took at the uh, One World Trade Center in a recent trip to New York City um, at the 9-11 Memorial and at Ground Zero. Uh, and with that, um, I'm gonna go ahead and just keep wrap this uh, video up quickly and uh, I just wanted to take a moment, share these images, and acknowledge uh, the events of that day.